we, we acknowledge that their service enables us to walk as free men and women in a great land. We are free. We're free. Lord, today we seek your honor, your sons and daughters who have served and who are serving our country, who are right now serving our country. We are reminded that because of their service, we can live in safety. We ask that you abundantly bless those who have previously served and may their service time be rewarded in every way. May they gain earthly and heavenly blessings from their unselfish hurt from heart. We thank you, Lord. It says, uh, may each of our veterans free honor, not just today, but every day. May they free them. We make this honor them, not just today, every day. Let's honor our veterans. Father, we also give special recognition to the wounded weary. Some come back with no legs and arms. You know, you think the wounded warriors, you think that they're getting too much? Try walking without a leg. Try walking, try, try stretch your head without an arm. But they're here, so let's respect that. We realize that many of our heroes are dealing with physical and emotional wounds that occur as a result of their time and service to our country. We ask that they would be given the best treatment available and that you add your supernatural blessings to all the efforts given to help them. We ask you to do that. The VA has paid me quite a bit of attention with a couple knee replacements and a couple of things. They have an all women's ward now on one side, one building. So, so I know that gift, that pleasure, that support. We ask that you, Lord, would show them miracles as they seek to gain health, to stability, and wholeness. And Father God, we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Next on the program is the singing of God Bless America. However, our soloist is out delivering meals at the present time. So we would like to play it on Pandora and that we ask that each of you sing along with us so we stay with the run of the shows for our program. Please sing along with us. I'm thinking he's pulling up now, so I'm putting this on hold right now. Yes, here is our soloist.
So during the pandemic in 2020, we are very happy to say that we either prevented homelessness or rapidly rehoused veterans or veteran families 121. Families we prevented from being homeless or either rapidly rehoused from homelessness. Uh, we have our own unique set of wraparound programs. So we have healthcare navigator, we have our employment specialist, we have housing stability counselors, legal aid. <laughs> legal aid, we just got funding from American Rescue Plan to uh, for legal services for veterans who might be having eviction. Um, problems paying child support, the child support free, what is it called? Free resources, but what? <laughs> child support issues, eviction issues, criminal issues, anything, anything, anything legal related that can stand in the way of them remaining stably housed. Um, after that, we also have shallow subsidy program. That's a two-year subsidy that we can offer veterans with income. They pay 50% of the rent. We pay the other 50% for up to two years. Because um, we all we're in a housing crisis right now. Housing inventory is extremely low, so they knew that veterans needed additional help for that. We also have community partnerships with Coastville VA, the HUD Bash program. are funded by Department of Veteran Affairs, and we also follow the HUD guidelines for homelessness, identifying homelessness, and that sort of thing. So that pretty much sums up what our program does in a nutshell. Anything you want to add? If anybody has any questions for me, we, we are extremely short staffed, so we can only be here until noon. Um, but if you guys have any questions for us, anybody, any veterans that you would like to refer to us, any resources you would like to know about in addition to the other programs that we offer at Community Action Agency will be hanging around up here. Thank you. And please, personal get connections. They really do know about veteran housing information. Next, I'd like to do a solo and to please sing along with Brady Council, God Bless America. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel 
John McRae. Um, as he looked out over the field covered uh, with red poppies, he was reminded of all those who had lost their lives in the same field during World War I. It was uh, then that McRae wrote the poem called Flanders Field, uh, which we will be reading um, together very shortly. And a woman named Moina Michael, who was a professor at the University of Georgia at the time the war broke out, read the, pla uh, read the poem Flanders Field in the Ladies' Home Journal. Uh, this woman uh, took, then took a leave of absence to volunteer at the New York headquarters of the Young Women's Christian Association. Um, inspired by the poem she read, Michael decided to write her own poem called We Shall Keep the Faith. As a sign of this faith and remembrance of the sacrifices of Flanders Field, she vowed to always wear a red poppy. After the war ended, she returned to the university and came up with the idea of making this and selling silk red poppies to raise money to support uh, returning veterans. In 1920, the National American Legion voted to use the poppy as the official U.S. national emblem of remembrance. To date, the, uh, to date, uh, the Friday prior to Memorial Day is considered National Pop Poppy Day. The poppies are handed, uh, handmade by veterans as a part of their therapeutic rehabilitation and distributed across the country by the American Legion of Auxiliary in exchange for donations that assist disabled and hospitalized veterans. Thank you. So let's tie in what she says with the Flanders Field poem that's in your program book on the left. And let's read it together. This land is your land and this land is my land. From California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. Everyone knows the song, right? As I went walking that ribbon of highway, I saw above me that endless skyway. I saw below me that golden valley. This land was made for you and me. I roamed and rambled and I followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts. All around me a voice was sounding, this land was made for you and me. When the sun comes shining, then I was strolling, and the wheat fields waving, and the dust clouds rolling. The voice was chanting as the fog was lifting, this land was made for you and me. Boy, we have a beautiful country now. And we need a program like this to remind us with all what is going on in the world today that our land is beautiful. Without further ado, a longtime friend, advisory council wife, I would like to bring up Mr. Abraham Wade, who has served in the Army to lay the wreath in our garden. This garden is a joint effort of Williamson Trade, Friendship Circle, he made us here from the Garden Club. Uh, we grow our vegetables in the boxes. You can see lettuce around here. We will have a garden party and do a, uh, with tomato and cheese sandwiches for all. Um, this will be full bloom, I believe by mid-July. Okay, so we hope you enjoy that. Mr. Wade, if you could do a, a demonstration of the laying of the wreath for us. Yes, please. Could yes, you leave that?
Can we have a moment of silence and remember that? Difficulties comes into play. That is the. Excuse me. Thank you for your patience. 